say, every thought that we think, if our ultimate goal and motivation in life is to please God, then that's going to make a difference in whether or not we're acceptable and satisfying to God. We all still live in human bodies, and so many times we want to use that as an excuse for why we do certain things. We're going to talk about that a little bit more, too, a little bit later. So the key to all of this is found in the next verse, and that is in verse 2 where he says, So be not conformed, but be ye transformed. How do we do this? He said, by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. To be pleasing to God means that we have to live in the will of God. Do we want God's will to prevail in all of our lives? So the word comes in conform. He says, be not what does that mean? Don't do it that way. It means be not. Don't be conformed. And the word conform means to adapt oneself to prevailing standards or customs. What are the standards, prevailing standards or customs in our world today? There's a lot of immorality. There's a lot of uncleanness. There's a lot of compromise. There are a lot of things that just defy the word of God. But yet that has become a norm and an acceptable thing in much of society today. Amen? Sad. But it's true. So he says, don't you be one of those. Don't be conformed to the standards of the world, to the ways of the world, but instead be transformed. That word transformed just means to change the outward form of appearance. That's a, a major change in form, in nature, and in function. It's a transformation, it's a change that takes place in the heart. It's a change that takes place in the thought process, in the activity process, in all areas of human nature. It's transformed to a spiritual nature, which is to represent and exemplify the one who makes the transformation possible. And through our commitment as children of God to say, we're now one of his, and we confess that, to be a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, then that means our heart's transformed, and now we want to walk in the way that God wants us to walk. So when we ask the question, one may ask the question, how is it or what is it that I must do in order to live a sacrificial life? Well, verse 2 answers it because he says, be transformed. It's the human nature of man to rebel against God. That's the sinful nature. That's the original nature of man. And so he said, this is going to be, have to be changed in order to live a sacrificial life. It takes a transformation. So, spiritually speaking, we would say one must be, as the scripture so clearly states, in order to be transformed, one must be born again. One must have that new relationship in welcoming Christ into their heart and to the, to the life. This, we know, has to do with the inward relationship the inward transformation, a new heart, a new mind, 
a new thought process, a new walk, a new talk. As Paul wrote in uh, 1 Corinthians 5.17, if any man, any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Those old things have passed away. Listen to me. Those old things have passed away. They're gone. And all things have become now new. Now if a person is still holding on to some of the old ways, there hasn't been a complete transformation. There hasn't been a complete commitment, dedication to that which we say we have received. Now, we, we know that this has to do with that inward relationship with our Creator. Now, I know this is elementary to many that's listening here today. It's sad to see, to experience, to hear even those that we love and care for so dearly think that uh, they're living a Christian life and doing exactly what God wants them to do by living their life the way they want to do it. How many of you really enjoy life? Anybody? Is that all? I don't know about you, but I enjoy breathing. <laughs> huh? I enjoy life. Whether you do or not, that's, that's between you and God, but I enjoy life. Now I realize in living my life that if I'm going to have a joyous and a happy life, that I cannot live my life the way the human flesh wants to live this life. Neither can you. If we're going to, have, going to be pleasing to God, then that transformation that has, we say has taken place in our life means that we have totally surrendered now. We're, we're going to live our life the way that God wants us to live it, and there's a way that God has given us to do that. And that's what we're going to cover in this message. It's a transformation. It's a new relationship with our Creator. And what makes the difference now is that uh, God lives in our life. And 1 John says God is. First memory verse you ever learned in the Bible was God is. Maybe you forgot it. God is love. Now, if God lives in my heart and your heart as Christians, as children of God, as professed children of God, then that means what lives in your heart? L-O-V-E. Listen to me. Whenever love does not prevail, when love does not rule and reign in their life, then what does that mean? That we've turned back to the old human nature and to let it prevail. Let it get back on the throne of life. And so he says, don't be conformed. Don't be that old person now. Be that new person. Paul talks about it in the book of Galatians and <clears throat> in Ephesians very clearly about that transformation, that new life. Love lives now where other things used to live. We talk about a divided nation and, and hate in our world today. Hate is just simply the absence of love. It's the absence of God. Love has moved in to live where we didn't permit it to live 
before. Now, that doesn't mean that before you got saved that you were a wicked person, but you were a lost person. And lost people go to hell. It don't make any difference how good they may appear to be or how good they may think they are. Or how not that bad a person. People that go to hell are those that don't trust Jesus Christ and have that transformation in their life. It's that simple. And I'm thankful that I'm hopeful that uh, it's going to happen anyway, but anyhow, that uh, we can preach what the Bible says now and not worry about what the government says about it. And uh, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you that true preachers are going to do that anyway. I don't care what the government says. God's word far exceeds anything that the government have to say. Amen. And I'm hopeful that we'll see more freedom in that area now and not so much. Hopefully some hatred can turn to love through the presentation of lives like yours and mine having an impact on others to receive Christ. That's what we're here for, folks. Did you hear what I said? We're here. That Christ might live through us and reach a world that's lost in sin. Luke 19 and 10 tells us that's the purpose that Jesus came to this earth. To seek and to save those that are lost. Our purpose in life now is to fulfill the mission that Jesus Christ came to earth to do. And you can only do that with a transformed life. If you're not willing to tell others about his love, his mercy, his grace, his salvation, then you're living a life that's just like it was before you asked Christ to come in your life. So, the instructions that God gives us, tells us, says that there must be some correction in life. That conforming and that transforming means that there has to be some correction in our life. If a person is conformed to this world and its ways, then you're not acceptable to God. 